this video, we're going to look at pop-up message boxes using object-oriented programming for Kinter and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from tkinter.com, and in this video, we're going to look at pop-up message boxes using object-oriented programming. And we're going to build this basic app where the user enters their name, clicks the button, and then a little box pops up that says hello with their name. Now, this is a very simple app, but it's going to show us how to use pop-up boxes using object-oriented programming, so it should be a lot of fun. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this object-oriented Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages, has all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So we've got our basic starter code that we always have with object-oriented code. I'm calling this file class underscore popups.py. In order to use pop-up boxes or message boxes as they're technically called, we need to import them. So let's go from tkinter. We want to import message box. Now I know on the first line here, we imported everything, but we still have to import message box separately. It's just how tkinter goes. It's really kind of weird, but that's just how it is. So let's come down here and create some widgets. And first I want to create a label. So let's go self dot and let's call this my underscore label. This is going to be a label. We want to put it in self. We want the text to equal enter your name. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and like a size of 24. Four, and we might want to put this on its own line, whatever. That's good. So let's go self dot my underscore label and let's pack this guy. Let's give it a pad Y of 20 to push down the screen a little bit. So we've got a label underneath that. We want a self dot entry box. So let's call this my underscore entry. And it's going to be an entry box. We want to put it in self and let's give this a width of like 30 to kind of stretch it out a little bit. And let's also make it wide and let's also make it bigger, right? So to do that, we give it a font of anything we want. Let's go Helvetica and like size 24 to make it a little bit thicker. So let's self dot my underscore entry dot pack this guy. And let's also give this a pad Y 20, push down the screen a little bit. Finally, we need a button. So I'm going to call this my underscore button. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in self. We want the text to say, I don't know, pop up, something like that. And let's give this a command of self dot pop up. Now we don't have this pop-up function yet. We'll create it in just a second. But first let's self dot my underscore button dot pack this guy. Let's give this a pad Y of 20, push down screen a little bit. So, okay, that looks good. Now we need this pop-up function. So let's tab out here and create pop-up function. Now let's define pop-up. We want to pass in self. And for now, let's just pass. Now make sure this is indented correctly. So you can see this is lined up with our init function. Right, so keep that in mind, that's important. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this and let's run this just to make sure this is looking okay. Let's head over here to our terminal. I'm in my c slash tkinter.com directory and let's run python class underscore popups.py. And when we do, we get this little box, we could type something, the button doesn't work yet, but it looks good and okay, so far so good. So now let's come down here to our pop-up function. Let's actually create a pop-up, a message box. How do we do that? We do this the same way in object-oriented programming as we do in a regular Kinter. We just call a message box. And then let's go show info. Now, there are six or seven different message boxes you can use. And let me just kind of paste these in here. We have show info, show warning, show error, ask question, ask OK, cancel, ask yes, no, and ask retry, cancel. And these all do what they sound like. We'll go through a couple of them to see what they are. but I've got lots of videos on these and past playlists. So you can check those out if you're interested, or you can just play around with them yourself and see. So we're going to do show info and it passes two arguments. It wants a title. So I'm just going to say hello. And then it wants whatever the text in the little pop-up box is going to be. So I'm going to create an F string and let's say hello. And then let's pass whatever is in our entry box. So that's just self.myentry.get. And that's a function. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. And back over here, run this guy. So let's go, John. Hit the pop up. Boom. Here's our title. It says hello. Inside of here, it says hello, John. We got this little circle with an I. That, I guess that's info, right? And that's good. So that works. But what if we don't type in anything? 
it just it still kind of now it just says hello and it doesn't pass anything. And that's not really what we want. So let's write a little bit of logic here just to sort of take care of that. So let's go if and I'm going to go self dot my underscore entry dot get. Then we want to do this. So this right here is saying, hey, if it's true that there's something in self dot my entry dot get, that's the same as going equals true, right? It's just sort of shorthand. You don't have to do the true. You could just run it like this. So it's going to say, hey, if there is something in there, print it out like this. Otherwise, let's go else. And then let's grab this guy and paste it in again. And instead of saying hello, let's have it say error. And instead of an F string here, let's just have it say you forgot to type in your name. Try again. Right. So we can use the show info, but let's mix it up here. And instead, let's do show warning just to see a different one of these. Right. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here. Run this guy again. So now I'm not going to type in anything. I'm going to click the pop up and it says, hey, you forgot to enter your name. Try again. And it's got this like triangle with an exclamation mark. You know, it's like ah, error. Right. And it says error up here. And that's cool. So. Uh, we could try this again by typing in John and now it says hello, John. So it's able to determine whether you've typed something in or not. So that's cool. Uh, while we're at it very quickly, we just let's try another one of these. So instead of show warning, let's say show error. Right. So go ahead and save this. Come back over here. Run it again. Do it like this. Ah, now it's a big angry red X. And you probably couldn't tell, but it made a little different noise. It's the error windows default error noise that pops up. Whatever, that's kind of cool. But but the big thing is this big red X. And if you like the X better than the little triangle, <laughs> you know, use this one, the show error. If you like the triangle, use the show warning. And that's kind of all there is to it. So super easy using message boxes. Really, there's nothing all that object oriented about this. We're just using it in a function that is object oriented, right? Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as a Kinter message box with functional programming. So kind of anticlimactic in that point, but you know, still you need to know how to do it. And this is how to do it with object oriented programming. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.